Hello guys, Sumi K here, and uh, I discovered a title today which, uh, if you know my channel at all, you know I'm a hardcore sim fan. And uh, on the 11th of February 2020, I discovered Crush Depth. It's a game I've never heard anything about it before, I know absolutely nothing about it. What I've learnt in the last hour or so is that this really is a hardcore submarine simulation in very very early access and I'll explain exactly what that means if you buy access to this today that's the 11th of February 2020 it's 32 pounds it's on discount at the moment it's more than 40 pounds at full price it's a lot of money to shell out for what you get right now but really you will be investing in the development of this project and you must understand that this is nowhere near ready to play yet but incredibly promising already. Hello and welcome, I'm Sim UK, and it is my goal to provide to you the most honest, fact-based, critical reviews on YouTube. If you find this review helpful, then please hit that like button, subscribe, and help to support the channel by donating via the links below. Thank you so much, and enjoy the review. I'm going to talk you through my first hour experience so that you know exactly what to expect if you invest your money in this. I have to invest my money in this because I've been waiting so long for a hardcore sim like this to exist and now I can't turn my back on it that I've discovered it. Okay, so the first 10 minutes were really bad. Nothing would load. There was some sort of authentication failure to the server message in the bottom left hand corner. I tried to create a character which just got me stuck and there were some very odd clothing options to say the least. In short, it was not going well and I really thought this was some kind of ploy, maybe a scam, a fake game. Spoiler alert, it's none of those things. After about 20 minutes, I uh, had to hard close the game and restart it multiple times. I tried to load the museum and the sandbox, nothing was working. And I was already formulating a poor review perspective in my head. Then, for whatever reason, after about the third or fourth reload attempt, the bottom left authentication error changed and things appeared to start working. So I opened the sandbox option again and uh, I got a disconnect error, something about client failed to bootstrap. So I hard reloaded the game for the fifth time and tried it again. This time the loading screen stayed present for five minutes and in the end, I just hard reloaded it. And I thought, this is probably the last time I'm going to try and do this. Because, you know, I've already spent 30 quid on this game, 31 pounds on this game. And it's not really impressing me. So this is about 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes in, I guess. Finally, something did load. And I was clearly placed on top of a submarine. It immediately reminded me of Silent Hunter. And I could see that there were many placeholders and detail whilst present was limited to say the least. I opened the hatch, climbed down the ladder, again reminiscent of Silent Hunter. Now the control room was inaccessible but I could see some depth and steering mechanisms so I proceeded towards the rear of the ship and the first thing that impressed me actually was the audio as I opened each of the hatches. It was very nice and a very immersive detail. I continued through the sleeping quarters, the galley, through the diesel engine rooms, we'll come back to that in a minute, and into the electric area torpedo area. I was mildly impressed at this point. I could see some potential in the modelling etc, but I wasn't really feeling like my £36 at this point was a good investment choice. However, I discovered some, well, I discovered many interactive elements. I discovered that I could control the light uh, by this single dial here. There were pressure gauges, dials, levers, and it quickly became apparent to me that this was actually incredibly accurate, like the copying blueprints, like a blueprint recreation level of accuracy. And I became considerably more intrigued. I proceeded to move away from the electric controls because I had no knowledge of how they worked, and at this point I didn't expect them to do anything, and decided to investigate back towards the bow. First, I went through the engine room where I fiddled and tweaked a little bit and then I continued on to discover more accurately recreated interactive elements like cupboards, lockers. I even found a John, which surprised me. 
The galley had some inactive water taps labelled for tap or drinking water. And it was clear that whilst some physics elements were very realistic, like if you close a door whilst you're in the way, the door would push you with it, and I actually quite liked that. But you could also interact with some of the lockers through the walls. This is obviously a work in progress. I was, however, pretty impressed to see almost every single hidden storage location I discovered was interactive, and I hoped that one day we would be able to put things in them. So I returned to the controls and I attempted to dive. Having not closed the hatch on the way in, I was curious to see what would happen if indeed I could dive. And yes, we could. We did dive. Not far, as we were currently stationed in a U-boat dock, but enough for me to climb up and witness the submersion. Sadly, the water did not pour in, but I was quite impressed to discover that I could not only leave the boat, but swim around. Now, this is something that potentially offers extreme levels of realism for the future, and I hope it's just not an accident, but something that's going to be developed even more. Sadly, I couldn't figure out how to dive back down to the boat or climb out to investigate what appeared to be a pretty primitive looking helicopter. So instead, I opted to hard reset once again and loaded the museum instead. And this is where things eventually got very interesting indeed. So it's about an hour in, or approaching an hour, when I entered the museum. And the museum itself is actually quite interesting. I saw a floating sniper at first, but that's not important. Uh, in the future, there's supposed to be a multiplayer element to this game. And I wondered if there was a person there, but he never moved, so... Uh, there was quite a bit of information actually on the walls, some models, some videos, and some information about AA deck guns. And there was stuff about torpedoes, depth, charges, and even a full-scale submarine that you could explore. Although, like the main submarine, it was incomplete. I wandered around, looking at the radio equipment and some Enigma machines, and then finally, whilst formulating a rather dismal yet hopeful review narrative in my head, I stumbled across the diesel engine. It was the same as the one on the sub, but this time I actually managed to start it, somewhat by accident or by luck. And I suddenly realised how realistic this sim was intending to be. It's the first proper simulator I think I've ever seen. It's the real deal. It's the type of simulator that I've wanted to experience nearly my whole entire life. It's the kind of simulator that I personally would build I had either the time, the money, or the skill. I quickly returned to the sub and attempted to recreate what I had just achieved. It took a while. In actual fact, all you need to do is increase the air intake and then increase the throttle, and the engines will start. But I didn't know that at the time, so I spent a few good minutes twiddling things, opening and closing this and that, before I figured out how simple it was to start. And then we were actually driving this up. We were moving through the water, out of the pen, and into the open sea. Now, for the first time, I got to see the sub's outer shell, and then I spotted another ship, an enemy ship. At least I thought I could try and sink it. But I couldn't remember how to fire the torpedo. There was a button, I'd read it in the menu somewhere. So I started just button mashing. I threw my guts up all over the tower. Immediately, the John made more sense to me at that point. I started opening controls I didn't know actually existed. I spawned in other ships. Then I started tweaking the weather and fishing North Atlantic, if you're watching this, this is how you do waves and bad weather, okay? So at this point, the FPS had effectively sprung a leak and attempted to plug it with a live hand grenade, which immediately went off and dropped the FPS so low that I couldn't actually turn my head in the game. But none of that mattered at all, because the audio was totally immersive, the waves were actually scary as hell, and I felt like I was literally at war. Then I stumbled across the manual steering controls and I started to dive, which left me floating on the surface of the ocean in the storm, and a bit effectively accepting my inevitable fate. So I've just invested 30 odd pounds in the most amazing submarine simulator and I'm sure as hell won't be requesting a refund for this. This has to be made, this game. This has to have solid FPS and I have to be a part of this development somehow. I'm totally hooked. I'm a little scared that this might never reach its full potential, but at the same time I feel responsible and I have to try and make it happen. If you're a hardcore sim fan like me and you have the available funds, 
There really is very good reasons to try and get behind this development. It's the best damn simulation experience I've had in a long time. And apparently the torpedoes and the depth charges do work. But unfortunately, I couldn't figure out how to show you in this video. So maybe there'll be a follow-up. Thanks for watching. Take care. Goodbye for now.